Hello, welcome to this brand new GCSE video looking at Elizabethan England in 1558. Elizabeth I becomes Queen of England on the 17th of November 1558 and in this video we're going to be revising her government, society, her personality and the big problems she faced upon becoming Queen. Let's start with government. Today governments around the world make decisions, create laws, keep order and embarrass themselves on a global stage. And it was the same in 1558, uh, maybe not that last one. In 1558, most Elizabethan life centered around the court. These are Elizabeth's friends and the leading nobles of the country. The elite of these formed Elizabeth's Privy Council. These are the nobles who help Elizabeth to run the country. If the court are her friends and acquaintances, then the Privy Council are her best friends and most trusted advisors, the poo to her piglet and the woody to her buzz. In fact, the term privy from which we get privy council actually means toilet. So yeah, very close indeed. The privy council help Elizabeth to make decisions, but they also oversee two very different parts of government. Lord lieutenants and nobles who are in charge of raising militia and are a little bit like a very early police force, making sure that these laws are enforced. Also, you get justices of the peace, part of local government who would hear court cases. The other part of government, and probably Elizabeth's least favourite part, was Parliament. Parliament's job was to pass laws and approve taxes. Elizabeth would tell them what to do, but they could also tell her what to do. And sometimes, but not always, she'd have to listen. It was only with Parliament's support that money could be raised. Ordinary life in Elizabethan England was split between two very different worlds. 90% of people as a whole lived in the country. These people ranged from the nobility and gentry to farmers such as yeomen and tenant farmers. The majority of this range, however, were people who owned no land and had to labour, the working poor. There were also vagrants in the countryside, homeless beggars without land or jobs. Towns were very different, with only 10% of the population living there. In towns in particular, you would see the middle classes. These people weren't ridiculously rich like Elizabeth and her nobles, but they were far from poor, just, well, in the middle. This included merchants, professionals such as lawyers and doctors, skilled labourers such as craftsmen. As well as the middle classes, the towns also had many unskilled labourers, as well as unemployed inhabitants. When Elizabeth becomes queen then, the society and government she inherits is very structured and complex in its organisation. However, Elizabeth has many strengths and characteristics that can help her to navigate it. The first of these is that Elizabeth is incredibly charismatic and charming. This helps her to win supporters, especially in the first couple of years of her reign. Secondly, Elizabeth is strong. She's faced lots of challenges which have made her resilient and able to overcome great difficulties. Elizabeth is also incredibly intelligent. She speaks many languages and accounts from the time praise her commitment to her studies. The fourth characteristic that we need to know about is Elizabeth's virginity. This is seen as a sign of her purity and it helps the idea that Elizabeth is married to her country. Despite her strength, there were several key problems facing Elizabeth upon becoming Queen. The first of these was Mary Queen of Scots. Just north of the border in Scotland, her cousin was seen by many Catholics as a far better candidate to be named Queen. Secondly was the question of legitimacy. Some believe that Henry VIII was not truly divorced from his first wife when Elizabeth was born to his second wife. This would make Elizabeth a bastard and not allowed to be named Queen. The third issue Elizabeth faced was her gender. It was very unusual for a woman to rule in her own right, and this was made worse by the many problems in her sister Mary I's reign, and this had confirmed for many that women simply weren't up to the job. Another problem Elizabeth faced was her relationship status as an unmarried woman. Because of her gender and perceived weakness, it was thought that she would have to marry. But that would mean for Elizabeth giving up a lot of her power to any future husband she may have. A final problem faced by Elizabeth was money. Mary I had left the country in lots of debt due to expensive and unsuccessful wars in France. 
Elizabeth could raise money with new taxes, but this would need Parliament's permission, leaving Elizabeth in a very tricky situation. To add to her issues at home, Elizabeth also faced issues abroad. Wars in France had left England with debt, but also embarrassment, and what's more, Spain also looked to be a growing problem. Spain was increasingly rich from trade in the New World, and it was flexing its muscles close to home in the Netherlands. Thirdly, there was the old alliance between England's two nearest neighbours, France and Scotland. Francis II, the King of France, had married Mary Queen of Scots in 1559, and the threat of invasion from the two nations looked possible. And what's more, it could be supported by England's many, many Catholics. The challenges faced by Elizabeth when she became Queen then were huge. In order to overcome them, she would need intelligence, patience, and a fair dose of luck. One challenge, however, above all of these, would stretch her ability to govern more than any other. A challenge which would define her reign as Queen of England. And that was what on earth was to be done about religion. We're going to look at Elizabeth's religious settlement in another video. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope this has been useful. Subscribe for more GCSE history videos, as well as playlists bringing together some of my favourite revision videos from across YouTube.